welcome back students and let us continue with our lesson 9 video 2 part 2 in the first part we completed page 55 we really saw what do you mean by subsistence farming we studied about intensive farming and shifting cultivation now we are going to begin with page number 56 from our textbook in which we are going to study about the other type of farming that is commercial farming and in commercial farming we are going to study four sub topics extensive grain farming plantation farming market farming and horticulture as i said in commercial farming extensive grain farming and plantation farming are the two major types of farming so first let us understand what do you mean by commercial farming so commercial farming means the farms that are operated that is farmings which are carried out with a goal with a goal means to achieve something achieve or uh, with a goal of producing more than the owners need for personal use this excess in output is sold for profit as i said in intensive farming the farmer that is the cultivator's family is completely dependent on what he produces but in commercial farming your larger area of land is there and so there is large production so the owner or the farmer whoever is it, the cultivator who is there he cultivates on a large scale and whatever he needs that he keeps for himself and his family and other than that whatever excess output he gets he sells it in the market so that he can earn extra profit he can earn more money so commercial farms are often involves large tracts of land large tract as you see or saw the first picture where uh, hectares and 40 hectares and 50 hectares and 100 hectares of land are being used for cultivation well as in intensive it is less than 40 hectares of land or you can say less than 20 hectares of land so there is difference in the type or in the use of land also now commercial farming are the farming which are specially done for capital intensive that is to earn more money to earn more profit here use of money is also required but along with that the other important thing what you require over here is machinery human power is there manpower is there but along with manpower machinery new technology is needed in commercial grain farming so your finance that is money as well as technology as well as manpower all these three go hand in hand so let us understand one by one what is commercial farming so commercial farming intensive grain farming or plantation farming this two intensive grain farming and plantation farming these are the two major types you have to remember this because this can be a name the following question so two major type of commercial farming is intensive and plantation if you write horticulture if you write market gardening it will be wrong similarly two traditional methods of farming so two traditional methods of farming will be intensive grain farming and shifting cultivation you have to remember this when you are reading please read correctly properly and understand the difference now the first part in commercial grain farming is extensive the world itself tell you extensive means larger area as you can see on the screen the picture the first picture hectares and hectares of land so here the farm size is greater than 2000 hectares i just told you more than 40 hectares more than 60 hectares more than 100 hectares so here it is 2000 hectares of land as you can see the whole area is only covered with wheat right and machines are being used because manpower is not possible over here so with manpower machine power is needed so let us understand in detail here in extensive grain farming more than 200 hectares of land is being used and due to this large size of farm or land population over here is less and production of grain is more if you compare extensive with intensive in intensive population will be more and availability of land is less 
on the other hand extensive availability of land is more and population is less okay so this extensive grain farming is carried on in such region where the population is less and availability of land is more okay with the help of machines like tractors and crushers which you can see on your screen then pesticides in for such a huge area of land insecticides pesticides or manure or fertilizer which have been spread on the uh, grains for the proper production it is very difficult to do with manpower so what have been used helicopters and specially designed aeroplanes have been used which spray water also with sprays pesticides fertilizers insecticide so that the plants are protected from pests and other inspections you can see in the picture right then monocrop monocrop means single mono means one so in extensive grain farming only one type of crop is grown as you can see in the third picture which type here you have seen that the picture of wheat is there second picture of barley soya bean is there then corn is there right so in monocrop single crop is grown on hectares and hectares of land either you grow wheat you grow corn you grow barley oats soya beans other things right so these are some main important characteristics there are other characteristics also next important in extensive grain farming along with this advantages which are there that monocrop and all uh, huge hectares of land technology this advantages or you can say some limitations are there now what are this because of 200 hectares of land more than 200 hectares of land capital money investment money is required why money is required so that they can buy good amount of seed they can also buy the machines and good amount of manure and fertilizer so heavy capital is necessary for this type of farming since huge expenditure expenditure means expense kharcha expenses are needed for the purchase of machineries fertilizers pesticides go down go down as you can see the picture the last picture which is shown down people are spraying some pesticide and along the other side you have the go down where the food grains are being stored for a longer period of time and transportation you can see the trucks and all so these for this thing you require money not only that there are some disadvantages that because of this extensive land there are problems of drought drought means sometimes maybe there may be water shortage or many a time there may be a, a huge a rainfall may be there and all the land may get flooded only with water so famines and drought these are two things which are natural calamities other than that attacked by the pests pest means insects are there various insects i have shown you different types of insects which are there on the crop not only that locusts locusts you can see that picture the green color circle one these are a special uh, insects which are found on the wheat and the corn plants which are very dangerous for the uh, crops so such types of uh, uh, insects or such type of pests they attack the crop if no proper insecticides pesticides are been spread on the crop along with that market fluctuation market fluctuation means i'll give you a simple example in today's world now you must be not going in the market to buy vegetables and other things but if you see onions kanda jisko kehte hain okay potato and onion simple example today the rates of onions and potato are 50 rupees per kg to 40 rupees per kg previously before onions were available in the market even for 8 rupees per kg and even for 20 rupees and even there was a time where during the shortage onions were available for 100 rupees 80 to 100 rupees per kg so this is fluctuation the rates in the market of selling the articles or the buying and selling of the things keeps on changing so this market fluctuation is also one disadvantages for extensive grain farming so this type of farming is carried out in temperate grassland region temperate grassland region means extensive grain farming is carried on in those area where hectares of land is used only for farming if you remember land like steppes prairies down wealth do you remember this the five major grasslands of the world if you have studied in our lesson number 6 yes so these are all the regions where you have temperate grassland regions where large and large hectares of land are be used for commercial farming or commercial grains 
Okay, so this is about extensive grain farming or commercial grain farming, which you can read from your textbook, page number fifty-six. So I have given explanation along with the pictures, so it will be easy for you to understand. Fine. Moving ahead, the next type which comes under commercial is plantation farming. Now, plantation farming is the farming which is carried out again on the larger area. Here. 40 to 50 hectares of land, acres, 40 to 50 hectares of land is being used for farming. And this type of farming, plantation farming was started during the British period, colonial period, where Britishers, they came up in India and they started raising their family colonies. And they started with rubber, indigo. Do you remember this in history? You must have studied about this. Yes. So this was started during the period where this colonial or setting of the colonies or setting of one particular village in one particular region was started. Now, what were the advantages and disadvantages of plantation farming? So, let us understand. Plantation farming, farm size of the uh, uh, plantation agriculture is 40 hectares and above land. As the plantation agriculture is practiced in hilly tracts, in the hilly areas, okay, hilly areas, use of machine is not possible and also Manpower, local manpower is required because machinery is not required in hilly region. So, manpower is required over here. Now, plantation name itself tells you that here you are not growing any particular crop for a particular season. But you are planting a tree for a year together or for years together. Okay. So, here what happens? The crops for which... The geographical conditions are favorable are planted. For example, simple example, previously Vase, okay, Vase was called Basin. Vase was very famous for bananas and whenever Vase name was taken, people used to say, Are Vase che keri, hirvi, okay, Vilchi keri, yellow bananas which is available in the market or the green plantains, green bananas, very famous, right. So, banana plantation of Coconut plantation was carried out in Vase on last scale. But today if you see coconut plantation is not a major in uh, Vase. But if you go to Goa, you see coconut. If you go to the areas uh, uh, like uh, Ratnagiri, then mangoes are available. So such regions where that particular season and the climatic condition are favorable for that particular fruit or that particular plant, such types of plants are grown according to the geographical and climatic condition. Here, single monocrop, only one single crop is cultivated. As you can see in the picture, the second picture which is showing about tea leaf. So, if you go to the areas like Uti, Assam and all, tea plantation, coffee plantation is carried out on the large area because those areas are hilly region. Terrace farming, tracks are there and coffee and tea plantation you can see for acres and acres of land. Okay. So, in plantation, which type of plants are grown? Plants like commercial plants plants we can call them in British period also this commercial grain farming you must have studied right yes so commercial plants like tea rubber coffee coconut cocoa and different types of spices here I have seen the given the pictures of tea plantation I have given the picture of rubber plantation here the next picture which you can see is coconut plantation then you have cocoa tree from which you prepare cocoa powder chocolate right Chocolate was prepared from that. So, cocoa beans, these are coffee beans, cocoa beans, chocolate powder you get and different types of spices like chili is there, clove is there, cardamom is there, different spices are been cultivated in plantation farming. Now, because of the single crop, now what are the benefits over here? The farmer, he cultivates this only for one time. That is, he has to waste his money for one time and Years together, then he don't have to plant that tree again. Slowly, slowly, he will only get the yield, profit from that. Because the fruit, once if the tree is planted, he keeps on getting the fruits again and again. So, this type of farming begins and spread mostly during the colonial British period. Scientific method of farming is also used. Along with that, manpower is also used on a larger scale. But along with that, this farming also has different disadvantages like climatic changes are there. Then uh, technological changes are there, okay, economical changes are there, market changes are there and such farming is carried on, you can see the areas, areas like South Asia, South Africa, Central America, okay, 
डिजाइन